Okay, I know what you're thinking. The After Effects layer is complicated and messy and I know, I know what you feel, but it gets easier. So the first thing that you want to do is create a new composition. So what you want to do is go into the menu, click composition and then create new composition. Okay, so you can name your composition like whatever you want, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to be naming it tutorial, of course. Um, but then you just want to click OK and I'll show you how to adjust these settings. Actually, right now. <laughs> So you want to go back into composition and then composition settings so that you can adjust it. So with the width and height, you can do 1920 by 180 and that creates the YouTube video size. Or you can do 180 by 180, which is like the Instagram square size. So if you're doing uh, an edit for Instagram and you have an audio, you just want to put the duration of that audio onto the duration of the composition settings and then you're good to go. But I'm just doing 10 seconds because this is just a tutorial. It's nothing special. All right. So now you've made your composition. What you want to do is there is a full bar right here. That is the quality of the preview of the edit. That may sound confusing, but it will make sense later. So usually you want to do it like half, third or quarter, because if you play the preview on full, it is really laggy and hard to look at. So yeah, you'll see what I mean later. Okay. Now to put photos and videos into the composition, all you want to do is click import and you can import multiple files at once or just one file, which is exactly what I'm doing. And it took a couple of minutes, so I just skipped that process and here are all the files that I'm going to be using. And then you just want to drag them into the time thingy majiggy. I don't know what it's called, but yeah, please bear with me. I am new to, I am new to After Effects. So if your photo or video is too small that you can see the black background, all you have to do is click S on your keyboard and scale will come up and then you can just zoom that into your liking. And now we have to split our clips. So all you have to do is go to where you want to split the clip and then click Command Shift D and that will split the clip and then you delete the remainder of that clip. You can also skip between the previous frame and the next frame, which is useful if you are doing transitions. Okay, so now we have got our clips ready, we can put transitions on now. But the clips are just a little too fast for me because I forgot that the composition was 10 seconds. So all you have to do to extend a clip, obviously, is go to the end of your clip and drag it out. Okay, that is much better now. So now we can get started with the transitions. But the most important thing for transitions is enabling motion blur. So you just want to enable motion blur and then put that on all of your clips and then you're good to go. Another key thing that you need to do is adding motion tile. So you just want to head over to effects and presets and look up motion tile. So then you want to drag motion tile over to your clip and then you want to adjust output width and output height to 300 to 500. It really does not matter which one. And then you can enable mirror edges or not, but this is what it looks like without mirror edges. And this is what it looks like with mirror edges. It really honestly just depends on your preference. Also, if you want to copy an effect so you don't have to drag and adjust every time, all you have to do is click onto the effect and hit Command C. And then go to another clip and click Command V. Okay, so to start a transition, what you want to do is go to the second frame near the end of the clip because if you go to the end of the clip for a transition, it's not going to work out well. So to do a rotation transition, all you have to do is click R on your keyboard and the rotation setting will come up. So the clock makes a keyframe. You want to click that at the end of the clip and then somewhere in the middle or at the start, you want to make another keyframe. The one in the middle is going to stay at zero while the one at the end is going to be around 60 or 90. Okay, this is the most important thing when doing a transition. So you want to highlight the two keyframes you have right here, 
then you want to right click on them and then click keyframe assistant and apply easy ease otherwise your transition will not work okay so now that we have our two keyframes highlighted we want to go to the graph editor which is to the right of the motion blur that we have enabled right now you can either edit in value graph or speed graph speed graph is like the smoother slower transitions and value graph is still smooth but it is faster than speed graph now follow my directions the best way that i can describe uh, adjusting the keyframes is by making it look like a backwards l Okay, so now that we've done our transition, let's take a look at it. Oh my lord, that's fast! Okay, 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 I will get back to that later. Let's just finish the rotation. Then you want to add another keyframe at the start of your clip. So if you did plus 90 on the first clip, you want to do minus 90 rotation on the second clip. And then you go to the end or near the end of the clip, add another keyframe and turn it to zero. And obviously, for the rotation to look good, you highlight both of the keyframes, right click, and then click keyframe assistant, and then easy ease, otherwise the transition will not work. So I don't really know the way to explain the shape of my graph, so you just need to copy the shape of the graph that I'm doing, and then you'll be good. Now, I just want to say that if this spin is still too fast for you, you can always just adjust the keyframes. So the thing about adjusting keyframes is that when you want to adjust them, it gives it kind of a bouncy look. And I know that you don't want a bouncy look with your transition. So all you have to do is go into the graph editor and just fix it a little. See, it's high on the left right now. So I just need to pull that down and it's not bouncy anymore. Another thing with keyframes is that if you want to adjust them, you can't just not select them and go into the graph editor because they won't show up. So you always have to select your keyframes, go into the graph editor, and then they will be there. I just adjusted my keyframes and here's what it looks like. So that's pretty darn smooth. And with the work area end bars, you always have to have that selected on your entire edit. Otherwise, when you render it or save it, it won't save the entire edit. Now I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do a zoom out transition. So obviously you want to click S to bring up scale on your keyboard and keyframe it. So as I mentioned before, the first keyframe is going to stay at zero and the second keyframe is going to start the transition. I just want to quickly mention that those black bars won't be there for you, they're only there for me because it is a low resolution image. And as you can see that zoom out is not the smoothest thing in the world, so you want to select your keyframes, right click and again click easy ease, go into the graph editor and follow what I'm doing. And as you can see from doing the first transition, it is actually really easy to get used to the transitions because it's basically the same thing, putting keyframes down, valuing the keyframes, adjusting the keyframes. It's actually quite simple. Also a quick tip, if you want to see all of your transitions and effects, just click U on your keyboard and they will come up. And then you want to click S to bring up scale on the second clip, keyframe one at the start, one at the end. The one at the end is going to be the end of the transition and the one at the start, you're going to want to zoom that in. And to get your keyframes into the graph editor, I think you already know what to do. Go into graph editor and put the shape into an L kind of shape. Oh my darn, that was so smooth. Now starting the same transition on the same clip was actually difficult for me to figure out, but all you need to do is drag the end of the transition to the middle of the clip 
add another transition and zoom that transition in. Okay, my, my explanation is absolute garbage, but on the screen right now you can see what I'm doing. And you don't need to add easy ease to that keyframe again because it already did it for you. But you do need to highlight them again to put them into the graphic, alright? So, it looks really difficult at the moment, trust me. But the keyframes on the left are from when you ended the first transition. And the keyframes on the right are you starting another transition. Just follow me and it will look fine. Basically, the end product is going to look like a U, so try to aim for that. I'm really bad at explaining things, but trust me, look at how good that looks, okay? Oh my god, that is so damn smooth. And then to end the transition, obviously, you want to click S on your keyboard again, zoom the first keyframe out, and then you add another keyframe and zoom it back in at the end. Also, I haven't shown you what happens when you don't add easy ease. Uh, going into graph editor, it's pretty darn bleak. Like, it's super straight, so you always need to add easy ease. Because now you can control it. And now just copy my graph from here. Now I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do the slide transition. So you want to click P on your keyboard to bring up the position effect. The one on the left does a horizontal transition and the one on the right does a vertical transition. I'm just going to stick with the vertical transition for now. So now at the end of my clip, I'm going to click the clock to make a keyframe and drag this all the way down. And then I'm going to go to the middle or the start of my clip and drag all the way up and also make a keyframe of that as well. Now, editing slides is a bit weird because when you enter the graph editor, it looks like this. Now, this is really complicated, especially for beginners. So basically, to fix this, all you want to do is click this button at the bottom here and then exit the graph editor. And because we use the Y position, we want to highlight the Y position, not the X position, and then go back into the graph. And now it's fixed. Now just copy my graph. And as I've mentioned, if that slide is too slow or too fast for you, you can always just move the keyframes and go adjust them in the graph editor. And for the second clip, you want to decrease the value of the Y position. Well, isn't that the smoothest transition you've ever seen? Well, just highlight your keyframes, click easy ease, and go into the graph editor, and you have this problem again, so click the separate dimensions, and then click Y position, and you will be good to go! <laughs> that was so fast. Also, the same rules apply if you are using the X position. Just don't highlight the Y position, and you'll be good. All right, now that you have finished all the transition in your edits, it is uh, now time to add those sexy borders. To add borders, all you have to do is go into Layer, New, and then click Solid. Now, you can pick any color you want. It doesn't have to be black. It can be red. It can be blue. But now I'm just going to be using black because that's the most common color. And then when you apply that to your whole composition, you want to go into Effects and Presets, look up CC Jaws, and add it to the solid. Turn height all the way down, go to completion, and type around 90 to 98. Now it's time to render your edit to save it. So you want to go into composition and then click add to render queue. Now rendering does take a little while to an extremely long time because of effects, transitions, presets. Like it takes a long time. But it didn't really take that long because I only just did some simple basic transitions and it wasn't that long. But when you're done it will be on your desktop or in your documents. And you can put it through iMovie, Sony Vegas Pro, Filmora, Final Cut. And you can post it to Instagram through there. I hope this tutorial helped for beginners on After Effects and I'll see you guys later.